if you give rapamycin to mice, it rejuvenates old hematopoietic stem cells. And it even made these older mice uh, more resistant to influenza challenge and it actually increased survival in the old mice that were challenged with the H1N1 uh, influenza strain. And kind of about five years after that, there was a study by a group at Novartis um, where they took elderly individuals and elderly individuals typically respond very poorly to vaccination. Sometimes you're giving double, triple, or sometimes even up to 10 times the amount of vaccine that you might give to a younger person in order to elicit a more profound response. And what they found was that they gave older individuals short course rapamycin, it increased their annual uh, influenza titer levels by 20%, which is a huge jump in the elderly. And what we also saw was that uh, them on this uh, rapalog or version of rapamycin, it reduced PD-1, which is an immune dysfunction marker on both their CD4 and CD8 T cells. So, you know, showing that this could actually be a benefit for vaccination as well. And what we did was we went back to our immunosenescence model and treated them with rapamycin. And so things where foot pad swelling, we saw deficits, they actually got better, not completely normal, but it made improvements where there was losses. And I think this is important showing that, you know, to some degree, aging is malleable with some of these interventions. Um, but then broadly, you know, as I've started my own lab, I'm really interested in, you know, what immune cell types are rejuvenated by mTOR inhibition or treatment with rapamycin. So we know T cells are, we know gamma delta T cells are, but sort of disparately from all these different individual studies, but I kind of wanted to broadly study it and so what we've done is we have given, or we've been part of a study where mice were given rapamycin for seven months, starting at 18 months old. So really kind of that 55, 60 year old equivalent of a mouse, you know, as a human. And looking at differences in males and females, again, because there are sex-based differences there and looking at the effects of rapamycin in hopes to see do we see immune cell types that are given a more youthful expression profile? Because those might be sort of the immune cell types that are rejuvenated or sort of given back resiliency from rapamycin. And once we've identified them, we'd like to go back and do functional assays on them. So if it's a macrophage that benefits from rapamycin, does it phagocytize better? If it's a T cell, you know, does it stimulate better? Is it less sort of hyperinflammatory? And so we, embarked on a single nuclei RNA-seq experiment. And just to show you, we've got all these different immune cell types from the uh, spleens. And what we see, not to sort of dive into the data too much, is that there's immune cell types that increase with age and there's immune cell types that sort of decrease with age. And what we're seeing from some of these different populations is that rapamycin shifts those populations back from sort of the age proportion back to the younger. And we're sort of seeing some, uh, you know, gene expressions in there too with, you know, where we may have this increase in exhausted T cells. We're seeing less of those exhausted T cells and less of the exhausted T cell markers within that population. And so this is kind of what we're really interested to work on and kind of where we sort of see the lab going. And hopefully this can be informative for other people that want to study rapamycin in the immune system or it can just serve as a bedrock of knowledge for the future of how people look at other gerotherapeutics and they benefit the immune system as well. And just to kind of give a better insight into you know, immune resilience.